Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, we are discussing a comment that was left on our YouTube channel by one of you out there. And by the way, thank you always for leaving comments. We appreciate them um, because what happens, the comments gives us topics for discussion. And I'm sure if you're thinking that, so are hundreds of other people out there. So thank you for being brave and leaving your comment. Today's comment uh, left here is actually part two, and I'm going to make it bigger because it's hard to read. Um, it's part two of our first part series where we discuss disenfranchised small business owners. Uh, probably the majority of people that are out here watching our channel. So this particular person says, interesting, I heard you say don't aim for set-asides. How with one without capital gain any traction? Are there any testimonials of disenfranchised low-income persons getting a federal contract without building performance history? And where did they get the capital from to perform the tasks that were required? Um, and then the person goes on to say, shouldn't city, state, and county contracts be the first place you start? Just asking questions. I'm curious why you said don't aim for set asides. I've been doing research for a coach, and so far everyone is saying the same thing except what he mentioned, meaning me, mentioned above. I see there's not many people speaking on the subject, so help is very limited. And the final part, please don't compare me to a married Caucasian couple to everyone else and say that they did it without any set asides because a low income disenfranchised and God knows what person can't compete without starting point that's attainable. And so, as I said, this is part two of that series in part one here, which you will see, it says how to win government contracts without past performance. We actually discuss some of our guests on previous episodes that we've interviewed on this particular YouTube channel. We've brought them on and we showcase their skills, their talents, and they help answer the questions for us. Unfortunately, the last 15 minutes got cut off. The other thing that we discuss is here our Making a Giants podcast. And so again, if you missed that first part, go back and watch it today. But today's different. So again, today's a different day. Um, and then today, what we're going to do, we're going to finish up that last 15 minutes. So if you watched the first part, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. If you did, this is the part two of the second part. And the last 15 minutes were cut off, so I'm here to bring that back. Now, what I decided to do was I wanted to prove what I'm saying because uh, what I share with folks is out there is, again, it's very easy to sit in the comfort of your home and watch YouTube people, and you don't know who's telling the truth. You don't know who's lying to you. So I'd like to prove what I'm saying. And if you're in any of my programs, uh, we've got a, a website here below. Click goodfoneric.com slash join. If you're part of any one of my programs, you know that I pull up my emails. I make phone calls. So you can see that we're actually doing the things that we say we're doing. Um, and so what I want to do today is I want to kind of fact check myself. And in doing that, I went ahead and pulled up sam.gov. It's a little reputable site, right? Everybody's heard of sam.gov. So we want to go ahead and fact check myself. I pulled up sam.gov and I searched for the keywords pressure washing and I searched the word floor. Now, what am I doing? What's the objective? The reason why I went to sam.gov is because the person's question was, that do you need set aside? And I tell people all the time that you do not need set aside. Unfortunately, there's so much misinformation out there that are telling people that they need set aside, that I'm combating all of the other misinformation and all the bad information. I want to caution everyone out there. I want to warn you, um, make sure that whoever you're listening to, whoever you're talking to, that they actually know what they're talking about. I know sometimes it can be hard to figure out if that person is true, if they're valid. But again, dig around, figure out how, how, how many contracts that they want. Ask them, right? If you are concerned or you're curious, ask the person, are they actually doing contracts? That makes a huge difference. It would make to me, if I was going to make an investment in someone or a program, I would want to know if the person who I'm speaking to, that coach, as you say, I want to make sure they're actually doing this for a living. So that's the first thing I want to caution everyone out there is to make sure they're doing this for a living. And so what I like to do is show you not only that I do this for a living and I do that on Instagram, on TikTok, on uh, LinkedIn, on Twitter. So again, you go on any of those feeds, you'll find me on those places. I do it there. 
Uh, so again, if you're on any of these platforms, go to GovCon Eric, go to GovCon Giants on Instagram, go on there, and I show you examples of me actually in the field, going to site visits, talking to people. Uh, I show you examples of things that I'm bidding, uh, proposals that I'm writing. So I show you real life examples like in life stuff, not sitting here in an office in a studio type setting. I show you in the field what we're actually doing. So what I'm doing today with this particular video, I want to pull up real life examples demonstrating the fact that you don't need set-asides and that's not written into these contracts. So aside from the fact that set-asides only represent a small fraction of all the opportunities out there, let's just scratch all that, right? 23% versus 70-something percent. And then when you break it down to actual hub zone, service disabled, uh, 8A, they're all 5% each, right? Or 5%, 3%, whatever the numbers are, I don't know off the top of my head. When you look at that, that fraction, so if you've got Women owned, hub zone, 8A, and service disabled, you got those four categories. And let's say they 5% each, that's 20%. The 80% of the other opportunities out there is you're just throwing all of that away. And really, you're really throwing away closer to 90% because there's far fewer in between people who have multiple, uh, more than two of the four uh, designations. So really, you're throwing away 90% of the opportunities based on um, just ignorance. Really, it's plain ignorance. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because when you don't know something, you should ask. And I'm glad you came here because at least I can set the record state and I can set truth to my tone. So now let's go back over to Sam.gov. I hate, I don't like this view. Let's go to half page view. And I'm on Sam.gov. And what I did was I typed in pressure washing. I typed in flooring. And of course, uh, just like any chef would do in the kitchen, I went ahead and I pulled up an opportunity. In fact, let's go back. This first one here, I literally just picked the first thing that came up which was Biscayne Bilge Tank Cleaning. And I pulled this opportunity up here, and it's with the Coast Guard base. And we'll see, this was uh, issued the 25th. I think today I'm recording this is uh, the 25th, I believe. Yep, so it came out today. Uh, it was published today. It was published literally 11.42 a.m. It's now 12.26. So it was published about 45 minutes ago. So we pulled this up, and it says here, total small business set aside. No certification needed for total small business set aside. So that right there just disproves or proves what I'm saying is true and disproves what you're saying uh, or proves that what you're saying is false. So right there says total small business set aside. Do we know what total small business set aside is? Do we know what total business set aside is? Do we know what total small business set aside is? All right. So total small business set aside means what? If you register and your company falls underneath the threshold for the NAX code, Right. If you go to the small business size standards table by the SBA and your company falls on that threshold, you are a small business. No registration needed. So go back over here and it says total small business set aside. And you're going to find oftentimes that things are typically fall under small business set aside, not for any specific type of social economic uh, category like 8A hub zone or women owned or veteran. So you're going to find this more often than not when you're looking at uh, small opportunities, which typically that's what we're pursuing. So total small business set aside, your leasing and rental equipment. Uh, here is, it gives you synopsis and there is one attachment here, um, PDF. And of course I went ahead and pulled up that attachment. And the only thing on that attachment is this far smart matrix. That's it. So now let's go back over to the actual document and it gives you a description of work. It says you here, this is a request for a quote, RFQ. All right, the solicitation document and incorporated provisions are included in the circular, which we just pulled up. Uh, it's anticipated that a competitive price purchase order shall be awarded as a result of the synopsis solicitation. All responsible sources may submit a quotation, which if received timely, shall be considered by the agency. All right, and so it gives you the solicitation, it tells you what it is, uh, tells you your task, bench cleaning, cleaning, the following, Bilges need to be clean, high pressure wash, remove oil, grease, contaminants uh, for both uh, ballast tanks and bilges will take place this date. Tank cleaning, this is what it is. And that's it. And it says, all quotes shall be emailed to this particular person. Figure this email, no received, no later than this date. So if you're looking at this, where does it say that you have to have government pass performance? If you're looking at this, 
Where does it say that a new entity can't bid it? If you're looking at this, where does it say that it's not eligible for disenfranchised people? You are creating walls for yourself. You are putting up your own hurdles in your own path. It's already hard enough as a small business, as a disenfranchised person. It's already hard enough for you to then go out and make assumptions, false assumptions, or buy into false narratives that um, really uh, you are put, perpetuating because of the type of comments that you're making um, out there. And so instead of seeking out and finding out, okay, what is actual truth, you know, and looking, because again, I want you all to do your own homework, to do your own research. I did not say, believe me, I'm saying, do your own research. It's very easy. I didn't, this took me five minutes to do. So go on here and do your own research. All right. So that's one example. We'll go on. Um, scrolling down, I put flooring in. There's some trailers and stuff. And and the reason why I didn't pick some of these is only because there was a lot of attachments and documents. And I and I and some of them had like 10 attachments. And I just, really, it's a lot to kind of read through in a 20-minute video. So I picked some that had less attachments. So the, this other one, Rental Portable Toilets and Cleaning Services, it sounds like a, a business or entity that a lot of small businesses get into, janitorial uh, type services. Uh, this would have to be Rental Portable Toilets and Cleaning. And the other thing that, that the reason why I like this particular opportunity. In fact, let me explain the first one. So I like this first particular one um, because the this tank cleaning and pressure washing is um, the type of business or industry that uh, a person that works with their hands, uh, friends and family, um, this is a type of business pressure washing that is very little actual investment. So meaning that um, if you've got the equipment, which uh, could be hundreds of dollars, if not maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars worth of equipment, you could technically start go out there and do this particular project. Or uh, some of this equipment can probably be rented for less than a few hundred dollars, uh, and so now you're only depending upon manpower and labor to do this. And so that makes sense to me an opportunity for a disenfranchised person or small business to start off with uh, if you weren't comfortable with paperwork, uh, if you weren't comfortable with uh, negotiation, if you're not comfortable with uh, all of this other crazy stuff that a lot of times these proposals require. So, you know, for me, um, if someone were to ask me, where could I start, right? And you were uh, the type of person that liked working with their hands, this is a great opportunity for you to build up past performance and for the government to get a chance to know you, your company, and know the type of things that you can do for them. So that's another reason why I pulled this up because it's very, um, you know, you, you really, if you don't have a whole lot of money, these are the type of opportunity that you can start off with, with um, you know, small dollars and make an investment. Um, this other one, rentable, affordable toilets and cleaning services. All right. And so on here. Uh, oh, that one I'm going to show last, actually. We'll show that one last. We'll show this other one first, and then we'll come back to this one because I haven't pulled up the PDF documents. They're at the bottom of my page here. So let's go over to this other one, Annual Small Boat Repairs. Uh, and again, all of these were on my list today that I pulled up on Sam. Uh, I was just looking for ones that didn't have so many attachments. So here's a rental of portable toilet cleaning services. Again, that was updated August 25th, uh, published August 25th, so it came out today. And then this boat repairs one was actually published yesterday. So, and then there's some more. I could pick this window washing contract in Indiana. So, you know, this stuff is everywhere. It's, uh, so now let's go back. We did the tank cleaning one. So let's go over here to the small, small boat repairs. Uh, and let's see, combined synopsis solicitation. It says uh, total small business set aside. Again, you're going to start seeing some of the same things. Uh, maintenance, repair, rebuilding of equipment. Now, Again, Eric, why did you pick this particular opportunity? The reason why I picked this opportunity is because uh, what it does is it shows you, sorry for that, uh, this is the opportunity that if I were saying to myself, okay, Eric, who can I partner with to help me with contracts? Like, okay, I don't have the skill set, but I'm hungry and I want to learn how to do this government stuff, but maybe can I use like one of my friends who has a business and then I'll do like the paperwork side and I'll help manage the contract. And then he can actually do the work. 
this is the type of opportunity that a person that does like boat repairs and craft repairs, they're not looking on SAM.gov, the government's procurement website, for opportunities. Probably they're getting their opportunities from people that are in or around marinas. They're advertising at restaurants near marinas, or they're advertising at places that service uh, marinas and boaters. So they're like they're less likely to be on here. If, if I was a person that fixed boats, looking at opportunities. So again, just putting ideas in people's heads out there of how is it that you can collaborate with friends, family, and other people that your associates that you know of to go after government contracts. Remember. Um, all of us have teams. Even the billion-dollar companies have teams. Amazon partners with people. Uh, Richard Branson's company is partnering with people. Uh, you know, so so why do you think that you've got to go out and try to figure this stuff out yourself? So here's an example of an opportunity that uh, you could, um, if you live close to this area, go out and find people. And again, I show examples on TikTok. I show examples on Instagram. Uh, of you can go out and find folks out here who can provide this type of service, partner with them to pursue this opportunity. So again, when we're looking at this, it says here, combine synopsis solicitation, best value, and we look at the requirements, and there's two attachments, okay? Here's the first attachment, which is the scope of work, small boat repair, it gives you the background, shows the requirements, Small boats, it tells you the type of boats that need to be fixed, gives you descriptions. And I know I'm going through this quickly, but again, you, you at home can stop the video at any point. All right. Tells you what you have to do. Reconfigure the boats. Gives you some pictures. All right. And then this is the next attachment as far as provisions in the solicitation. And I know that this, when you look at these types of documents, sometimes um, people get intimidated by this. But really, uh, with the government, most of the time when you see all of this, these are FAR clauses. And so they're really just uh, clauses like sexual harassment, uh, like I see, organizational conflict of interest. Uh, the where you're working at. So a lot of this stuff are just standard clauses that they put in every single contract. So don't be intimidated when you see these all these things out here because, for example, this is contractor access to the facilities. All right. So it's just telling you when you can and can't go to the facilities. Nothing, nothing for you to actually do with that clause except understand it. Submit of invoices. It tells you how to submit your invoices. Again, nothing that you have to do with that clause except understand it. Request for equitable adjustment. That's if the government, if there's something uh, that you that's a differing uh, between the site and uh, the scope of work, then the government's supposed to pay you um, additional monies that you're due. Um, so a lot of these clauses, really, there's there's nothing that you actually have to do except read and understand them. So don't be intimidated when you see all this stuff, because it just, and, I, and it's just a matter of understanding what the clause means and. It really just incorporates part of your contract. Delays, you can't delay it, obviously. Uh, if you're delayed, this is what happened. Uh, you have to have insurance. So a lot of stuff is just, and you'll see once you do a couple of contracts or once you've pursued a couple of these things, you'll see this is all repetitive stuff, repetitive information. So, all right, so this is just all of the contract clauses that's included in here. These are pictures in the scope of work in here. All right. Um, and then going back, tells you more FAR provisions. Tells you best value. Period performance. Okay. And again, nothing on here. Um, offers are due this date. They can be submitted by Smartsheet located at this location. For more information, email this particular person. So, again, once again, nothing on this document says that you have to have uh, past performance working for the government. Nothing in this document says that you have to have been in business for so many years. It's just, it's really, you know, um, nothing on here makes you have to have a set aside. Um, I'm just trying to figure out 
um, you know, if you work with someone who already fixes boats for a living, then you could use them to actually do the work. You put the contract together, you manage that, and so then you're not spending any money. Um, so I, I just think that there's so many ways to skin the cat. There's so many ways that you can pursue these opportunities. There's not one way, there's not one path, and unfortunately, there's so much misinformation of people who, because they've never done it. So they assume that the only way is through the certification route. That's an assumption. That's a false narrative that's being projected throughout the small business communities. Here is a perfect example where, again, it has nothing to do with being disenfranchised, nothing to do with number of years of business, nothing to do with how much money you got in the bank, none of that stuff. So that's two examples. Let's go ahead and pull up one last example before I, I cut out on this video. And all we're doing is we're just showing you uh, the reality of it. And again, go back to um, this particular video. Go back to my podcast guest and look at these folks out here. Because what I'm showing you on Sam.gov, I'm I'm basically confirming what I've already showed you using with these actual people. But now I'm going on Sam.gov and I'm like doubling down on what I said earlier. So I'm not backing up. I'm actually doubling down on what I said in terms of that you don't need certifications and it doesn't matter whether they're disenfranchised and you don't need money all the time. So again, yes, if you want to build your business and you want to be the prime contractor and you want to be have your name on the board, then yeah, you're going to probably need money. But if you're okay with um, learning the business and making, uh, like they said, 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. If you're okay with that, then there's all alternative ways to do it. And I'm showing you examples of that. So here, again, rentable portable toilets and cleaning services. Uh, there's four attachments here. And let's go ahead and pull them up. There's one, two, three, and four attachments. Uh, this attachment, again, as we showcased before, clauses incorporated by reference. So these are four clauses. Uh, nothing to see here. Let's go back. Okay, here's the statement of work for the rental of the portable toilets and cleaning services, scope of work, period of performance, correspondent, your responsibilities, other information, firm fixed price, uh, payments through WAF, contract administration, here's your point of contact. You must be registered in WAF to get paid. That's only after you get paid. It doesn't apply now. Okay, that's that. Um, here's your schedule of supplies and services. All right, so you list here, rental portable toilets, hand washing stations, cleaning services, one time per week. Uh, it tells you your quote date, your vendor name, business name, business address, Dunn's cage coat, representative title, signature. All right, um, and here's a combined synopsis, solicitation, RFQ number, the date, time, place, contract address, point of contact, set aside. Can I zoom into this? Set aside. Not set aside. Uh-oh. It went somewhere. All right. Went back. Okay. All right. Set aside. Not set aside. Uh, competitive, unrestricted, operation, duly authorized to operate and do business in Japan. I didn't even know this was in Japan. All right. Well, that actually answers another question that people always ask me. Uh Eric, if I'm an international company or if I'm not a U.S. citizen or if I'm resident, can I do business with the government? Here, this answers that question for you. This actually happens to be in Japan. I didn't know that. But either way, um, it doesn't change the fact that we're still proving the point that you don't need a set aside. So again, um, the competitive opportunity to pursue and uh, just like the rest of them, it doesn't matter about your set aside status. It doesn't matter uh where you come from, it doesn't matter to disenfranchise, and it doesn't matter um, whether or not that you have access to capital. Because again, uh, if you decide that you want to pursue the consulting route or you want to pursue the subcontracting route, then there are opportunities for you to do this with very little capital. If, however, you decide that you want to become a prime contractor, unfortunately, a prime contractor you're going to have to be responsible for the overall contract. And that's not necessarily a path that everyone is necessarily has to take in the beginning. So a lot of times that folks are telling you to be a prime contractor, but I can tell you this, 
Being a prime contractor is not always best for everyone out there. There is no one size fits all solution. We are all unique, just like we all have unique DNAs. We're all unique people, individuals. Uh, we are all unique companies and entities. And so there is no one size fits all solution. So do not pigeonhole yourself into thinking that the 8A is the end all be all, the hub zone, the veteran owned, the da da da, this and that and own these things. Um, look for opportunities that you have access to great people, great partners, great relationships, and then you can build upon that. So if you've got those things, that would be the foundation that I use to start with in pursuing my federal contracting journey. Hey, listen, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, things, make sure to go here at govconeric.com slash join. If you like this video, hit thumbs up, make sure you subscribe. And if you've got a question, a comment, a concern, leave it in the show notes because I might just answer your question next. Thank you so much.